This time we go on a spearfishing and freediving mission and there's some crazy snapper encounters. Also, there's a full rundown on rod techniques for slow pitch and micro jigging. It's a kingfish. It's a kingy. <laughs> Hey, how's it going? Well, we're at the um, our little location in Coromandel here, you can see behind me. And we're just sort of getting geared up to go out for a dive. I'm, I'm hanging out to have a bit of a look. I found a bit of a new spot. You know, believe it or not, even though I've lived in Coromandel for 19 years and been diving it, ever since I've been here, free diving that is, and spearfishing, this is an area I've only had limited experience in. So I kind of, uh, while I was fishing the other day, had a bit of a um, suss out of a location and thought to myself, yeah, I'm going to kind of go and check this out. It looked like there was quite a nice couple of reefs there. So I'm going to go have a dive. I don't know what the water visibility is going to be like. It's been raining on and off all week and there's a little bit of a swell running. It's pretty flat at the moment. So you just got to time your, time your launching and retrieving. So yeah, we'll go have a look at that and hopefully I can capture a bit of footage underwater for you of the area and we'll see how we go with the spear fishing and also I have a bit of a look for some craze and whatever else. But um, before I head out and get changed into my spear fishing gear, I just want to give you a, give a bit of a shout out to these new, um, I've got some new merch. So you see these hoodies here and um, I've got these designs on them done by myself as you know I'm a bit of an artist and um, so I've started producing a bit of merchandise so I've got t-shirts and I've also got these hoodies now I'll just try and turn this around and show you but on the back as you can see is a, another design so they're a double sided print and um, yeah you know if you want to get get one of these this is this uh, design here is a snapper skeleton with a bit of a um, silver fern for a backbone very unique never seen anything like that before so you know if you want to check out my um, my merch that I've got available now the yakfish merch get onto my website which is www.yakfishnz.com I'll put the link down here for you to have a look at and it'll also be in the in the um, comments or sorry in the in the um, description on the video but anyway let's head out kite's already down on the down on the shore and um let's head out and see if we can find a bit of a feed and just really just go and have a look around and a new adventure With a crayfish in the bag already after only being in the water for literally five minutes my attention soon went to a weed line in about 12 meters where I would look for some John Dory hopefully sitting on the edge of the sand lying in wait for something to come along that it can prey on. It's quite common to find the Dory in places like this yet with nothing around I started to peer over ledges in hope of a good snapper sitting at the base of it. Yet with nothing around on this side of the reef that extended off the headland, I switched my focus to the other side. Diving down on the other side of the reef, I immediately discovered a lot more fish life. And for some reason, I knew there was something around lurking near the sand.
gutting the moki after spearing them had brought in a heap more fish. So this got me even more excited and so I proceeded to crush up some kinna and place it at the base of a nice looking ledge with cover. How's it going? Well, that was awesome. Really nice sort of new country that I discovered there. And um, highly successful. I mean, it started off, first thing I got that crayfish within sort of a minute of being in the water, which I was stoked about. I didn't actually get a lot more in the crayfish front after that. I saw one other pack horse, but when I went back to get him, he'd scarpered. And they quite often can do that. They're pretty smart. Those two blue moki, that was a real bonus. I also bagged that snapper, you know, broke up a bit of kinna and dropped it over a ledge and yeah, that snapper was really funny when it came up to my, saw my spear tip shining or something and came up and bit it, you know. Crack up, man. I mean, they can do some funny things at times, snapper, and are full of surprises, so yeah. But managed to bag that as well for tea and so I'm pretty stoked. I've got a really good feed and certainly got enough, you know. Those blue moki will feed a lot of people and they will. And the snapper and the cray, well Janet and I, that, that's going to give us a couple of meals. So stoked. Anyway, um, I'll talk when we get back on shore. In the next part of this episode of Wheel Screaming Kayaks, I've got a rundown on micro jigging techniques. So, yeah, we'll catch you on the next part of this episode of Wheel Screaming Kayaks. Alright, so today, what we're going to do is we're going to go over the finer points of, of micro-jigging. Oh, what a bugger, this guy's, his guts come out of his mouth. But, yeah, we're going to cover the, you know, some micro-jigging and slow-pitch jigging techniques. I just dropped down on this. It's not so much about, you know, like this fish here. You know, I'm using this little sort of more vertical jig it's not so much about getting them on the drop as it is getting the right technique to get them fired up and and get them interested in what you're putting down there so anyway we'll uh we'll do a bit of fishing and we'll we'll cover these various techniques that i've sort of been developing and you know I, i've also developed them through watching some of the overseas Japanese experts and that sort of thing but with our species in New Zealand it can be a little bit different you know so you have to play things a little bit differently um, so we'll go over go over a few techniques and um, we'll show you how it's done so what I'm using here today is there's a couple of different options I've got this new Tai Kabura rod now this is fantastic it comes in a spin and an overhead option and um, the spin is, is quite good in the sense that you can basically do, you know, work smaller jigs with it. This is a little 28 grammar. I go lighter than this as well. So, you know, this is more of a vertical jig. But when this, I mean, it's quite important to understand what happens with your jigs. When this one goes down, it sort of goes down and it, and it kind of does a bit of a circle and it loops quite around. Now that can work in your advantage, especially when you're dropping into schools. It looks awesome. They'll see it coming down and they'll pounce on it. So the technique for working this is actually lift and just wind as you go. And lift and wind as you go. What this does is this actually fishes 
the entire part of the water column with the micro jig. Now you can vary it, like I like to have the rod sort of under my arm when I do this, so you can pull it sideways. It's pretty hard on the kayak, but yeah, nothing mid-water, so I'm gonna drop back down again. So that's the method for retrieving it and using that rod. This is a Tai Kibura spin rod. I'm using that rod to actually help make that jig swim better. And by making it dart sideways and erratically like it does, it actually, it attracts fish to it, you know? And that's when you've got to like try and sit still and basically just pause for a moment and that's when those snapper will come up and hit it. So it's that working it up like that, lifting the rod tip, using that tip of the rod to actually work that jig for you and get it to flutter. The other technique is, as I've mentioned, drop it down, but the other technique when it comes to um, doing bottom bouncing, and you know, when the fish is sitting hard on the bottom more, there's no need to be winding the jig up so much. So you can basically focus on that lower part of the water column. This is really good to use when you're fishing for gurnard. So it's basically just up off the bottom slightly and then it's just the lifting action and pausing and a lift and a pause and a drop and a lift and a pause and a drop and that works quite well especially for fish that are sitting close to the bottom because when you're doing this you're basically bringing that jig up causing it to dart a bit and the fish that are sitting hard on the bottom will come up off the bottom and actually track that jig and that's when you'll get the attention of them so by working this like this you'll notice the rod I mean look you can see how much it folds away and then straightens these these rods are designed exactly for this kind of activity and this you know the difference between the spin rod and the overhead this one here is a little bit more I kind of um, I never was really a big fan of spin rods for jigging but since getting this Taikabura spin rod, I've actually been quite enjoying it and I've been catching a lot of fish. I love it for the smaller size jigs. I like those little 10 grammers to 28 gram sort of smaller size sort of jigs can be very, very effective. And this rod here is excellent for that. Whereas the overhead I find is better for more the slow pitch style jigs that are sort of 70, 60 gram you know and more or 40 gram but this rod here is so nice to work like this off the bottom and the reel's good too you know you can do a turn of the handle much like the overhead but i prefer the overhead for dropping down directly whereas this one here when you're letting it loose you're, you're in less control you're still able to pause by tapping that reel but the overhead you've just got that bit more control with the thumb spool and also engaging it when a fish hits it it's easier to engage it in gear <laughs> oh boy I've got something fairly decent here and this fish is definitely winning at the moment I kind of hooked it bottom bouncing like I'm looking for gurnard and I basically I'm not really doing a lot I'm just lifting and dropping and then pausing and this fish hit it and I kind of felt the weight of it <laughs> and it's um it's got a little bit of weight to it so this is a slow you know I'm in 30 odd meters of water now you know because I come out here to look up over on the mud I can see color coming now oh this looks like a reasonably good fish actually it's a kingfish it's a kingy <laughs> yeah oh my goodness wow I don't know how I'm gonna grab this guy <laughs> and he's off <laughs> it looks like a legal kingy actually believe it or not I'm gonna have to um have to and this is the slow pitch jigging you know the kingfish are obviously hunting on the bottom I'll see if I can get the lip grippers into it look at that on that little sling jig and the Thai Kibura. Woo -hoo -hoo. So the other setup that I'm using is, it's another Thai Kibura rod, but this one here 
is the overhead version and I've got this Maxwell hybrid on it. These are great little reels for fishing this style. Um, I'm also using you know a heavier jig. This is like a slow J. It's more of a slow pitch jig. Got a lot of flutter and um, yeah just when it drops down it actually goes like this a lot on the drop you know so you get a heck of a lot more action out of it than the smaller jig that I was using before and it has a bit more presence as well so I like to use this style of jig with this style of uh, rod and reel you know I prefer this some people like the spin set but I prefer the overhead I just like the control I can drop I can engage the reel really quickly and then I can work it you know so you got options um, this Taikabura rod is very similar to the spin version but it's just got the spiral wrap so a little bit different for working the jigs and you can work them a little bit faster as well if you want to more of a mechanical style so yeah that's um that's what I'm using so let's see how this performs and I'll show you some of the action that I use for this so this is where you know this is where the overhead set comes in I was just really the, the fish that were there before you know with the micro jig and the and the other rod I just wasn't able to produce the action that's really firing these guys up but you know this uh, this action that I just put in here really got these these fish that were there really interested and the result is a nice fat snapper I'm not going to keep this guy but um, yeah you know both hooks into him lovely fat fish you know beautiful condition they are at the moment so you know it's about working them and, and this is where the overhead set just has that slight advantage because I'm able to actually really really work the jig a lot differently the other thing that I like about the overhead setup is you're always ready to drop on some sign as soon as you see it whereas with the spin set it's not quite so easy so I've just seen some really nice mark on the sounder and I'm just I've just come to a stop and I'm just dropping straight down now to see you know try and put my jig in front of the fish that are there you know and that's all part of it is Basically with the overhead set it's easy to just disengage that reel and to free spool and get it going down straight away. And the heavier jig too also does help get you down there quicker. So you know the one I'm using now is an 80 gram jig and I just had a bit of a touch. And I'm just all I'm doing with this is just winding. And and the rod does a bit of a dip and it just gets that jig moving up and doing a bit of a flutter when it comes to the end of its movement which is really really good for attracting the fish i also tend to fish this setup under my armpit with the butt section of the rod whereas with the spin rod i've got it more under my arm I managed to have a pretty sweet day on the, on the this little jig here you know this is the one that's been doing the best out of all of the all of the jigs today this one here it's doing the damage you know even the bigger jigs and it just shows you that sometimes those bigger jigs are not necessarily the ones that are going to get you the best fish on the day that's it for me for today micro jigs my goodness you can't go wrong with them so give them a go they are a lot of fun